bit over there. I'm going to apologize for the bad camera work. My uh, tripod's in the truck. My dad's got the truck out right now. But I wanted to maybe start a new kind of a, a series, perhaps, just talking about some, some of the great books I've been reading lately. Uh, let's try to share with each other I mean, really good quality information. There's a lot of great stuff out there um, and should go without saying, but there's never been a better time, right? All the, the collected wisdom we have and the access to the Internet, but also you find a lot of stuff in the library that you don't – it's actually easier to come across quality stuff, I think, when you go to the library. Um, this is a book called Da Vinci, The Da Vinci Method, Break Out and Express Your Fire uh, by Garrett Laporto. I just want to read a little bit. Um, this is page 228 uh, toward the end of the book, and the, the headline – it's a subchapter. It says, what are you conscious of? Um, before I talk about that, I also want to give props to Brendan Burchard and his book, The, the Motivation Manifesto. That is a book for our time. Uh, Brendan is uh, brilliant, um, loving, articulate. He's got a lot of great stuff on YouTube. But again, The Motivation Manifesto, to me, is a blueprint for life. Uh, is the I use the analogy, uh, the map to the, the treasure of Sparta. If you get that analogy from the Count of Monte Cristo. So, getting back to this book, what are you conscious of? Should I read this chat? Um, should you read this chapter or the next? Should you subscribe to cable or DSL? Should you watch Jay Leno or David Letterman? Do you really want to supersize that? These are not real choices; they are distractions. They pull you away from your deeper choice. They drag you into a trance of information overload. They seduce you away from your true relationship with others. These decisions steal what little room for intimacy you still have left in your busy life. You may be tempted to steal a moment that you could have shared with someone you love, but instead you exchange it for something else. You might use that moment to read a senseless trade journal article, uh, watch another TV show, download another piece of useless internet data, all in the hopes that this new media will somehow save you from yourself. The endless sea of information keeps pulling you deeper and deeper until it overwhelms you. Your mind begins to race. Frantically, you will throw good time after bad, hoping you will not drown before you are vindicated from this careless dive. So I think that's kind of a timely concept, too, with uh, social media or smartphones. A constant distraction and, and and kind of getting lost from our purposes. We're here to connect to people. It's a struggle for things that we find meaningful, not chase trinkets. And that's that's my message, but let's get back to the book. Although you see yourself making decision after decision, they all lead to nothing, to nowhere, just deeper into the hole. No more input will save you now. No clever decision will set you free. You have forgotten something far more important. For it was not information but devotion that could have saved you all along. You see, we, w we can be entrenched in a Pavlovian script of stimulus, response, decision-making. We can experience ourselves as no more than emotional droids. We can lose consciousness of our very being and aliveness. It is then that we are unaware of the greater choice, dangling high from the heavens, reaching down to us just above our heads. All we need to do is look up from our tasks and we will see it once again. Because we are human, we long for more. We feel a calling to a greater experience, but often we just don't remember where to look. Sometimes when I go to a movie, I am overwhelmed by the coming attractions. I become so captivated by the dazzling imagery, sounds and stories that I actually forget which movie it was that I was coming to see. Then I wonder if in just 10 minutes it is so easy to forget the entire purpose of my movie-going excuse me, adventure, then how easy must it be to forget over many, many years the entire purpose of my life? It's not just that we forget why we came, it's even worse. We forget that we have forgotten <laughs> why we came. We don't even have the memory of a memory to wonder about. Living consciously is remembering constantly. It is imperative, for if at any moment we forget, we may not remember again 
for a long, long time. We will not even realize that we have forgotten because we will also have forgotten that we have forgotten. It's a little convoluted. So easy it is to forget. So slippery and subtle is the slope down into the trance of living unconsciously. And we can, and how we can now, um, excuse me, and how we can know for every slip from consciousness becomes by definition unconscious. When we are nodding off, falling back into the helpless trance, let us kindly nudge each other awake. Oh, I love that. That's what I try to do. Constantly. With others. Like, guys, we're alive right now, okay? But let's go. Let's do something important. I think that's a message for our time also. Um, let us show one another there is always further to go. Okay, we're not done yet. Still higher to lift. Let us help carry each other through those vulnerable times when tears are all that can be mustered because on the other side of those tears is where freedom is found and that's what we're after in life. Freedom. Without love to remind us of our mission, it is far too easy to forget, to drift off and to slide back down, down into another daydream, down into that pitiful trance and this time the trance may last our entire lifetime. So let me wrap it up there so it doesn't get too long. Again, let's get the the book, Da Vinci uh, Method. Um, and he says there's like 10% of us that are, have this Da Vinci mindset. I think we all have Da Vinci. We're all divine. Guys, you all have so much power. We all have gifts and talents to share. Uh, it's going to be okay. But um, yeah, again, this video, I just, I've come across a lot of great books lately. Um, so... I hope this, you know, does something for you and uh, encourage you if you've got YouTube or, or not, if you want to, you know, share the the valuable lessons you've learned. I've, you know, there's so much great stuff on YouTube from TED Talks, um, just online, um, you know, the science. I don't want to watch television anymore, but I used to like the Discovery Channel. Um, I think TED Talks is a great place to start just to get ideas that change the world and that's how the world changes, guys, ideas. And my ideas are simple. We're all connected. We all um, can have the world if we work together. Life shouldn't always be a competition. Let's help each other out. So, um, you know, please sub subscribe, share the video. You know, I want subscribers just so I can get a voice in the world and communicate to people. I'm not going to be accepting advertising. Um, I want to make my money other ways. But uh, how can I sign off? Okay, let me sign off with this. When I was in college, uh, mid-90s, Cal State Long Beach, we had a hypnotist come to our, our dorm. Uh, Alexander the Great, I think his name was. And as he uh, kind of awoke people from their trance, uh, the hypnosis that participated and that had fallen under the, his suggestion um, from the audience, he got them all in a circle and put them kind of to that sleep state and says, I want you to remember, consider that in all the infinity of space and all the infinity of time, there has only ever been one of you. And there will only ever be one of you. And you have gifts and talents to share and bring to the world. So so do that. You're special. I think that I, like, I like that message a lot. Um, so signing off. Have a good day. Bye.